What's going on, Commanders fans? Welcome back to another show, Believe in Commanders. It's Anthony Armstrong. Got Brian Murphy down there in ATL. We are excited post NFL draft. It was an exciting three day event in Kansas City. We didn't get to go, but we watched on TV or any other uh, platform you could catch the NFL draft. I know I watched on a four letter channel. Um, watch the four letter channel. I didn't watch on like the uh, easiest one, two, three channel. So I, uh, for whatever reason, I associate the NFL draft with hearing like a Mel Kiper, Todd McShay, mm-hmm. those voices, uh, rather than who I don't know who was on uh, the ABC uh, network. But either way, uh, Brian Murphy, what's up, my man? How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, we were just talking before we got started here. You know, the draft goes right into rookie mini camps, which we'll talk about in the later episode right into OTAs right into mini camp right into preseason and the regular season it'll be here before you know it the NFL before draft is kind of like kicking off the new uh season so I'm feeling good and it means football is right around the corner uh, and summer is right around the corner too so I'm excited yes indeed we're right smack dab in the middle of the NBA playoffs there's been some exciting exciting series out there and one thing I love my son Apollo he's getting into basketball he's he's nice. loving it. he had a double double in his saw that. most recent game uh and it was legit double double i mean like he he made five buckets scored 10 points and uh he, he literally got like every defensive rebound it was a beautiful thing to watch i was a proud dad um and this morning he was watching the sixers and the celtics game nice. on recording so dude's loving basketball basketball playoffs are here and if you want to bet on that, you can use Bet Online. You can go over there, betonline.ag. Use our welcome code, believe, B L E A V, get a 50% welcome bonus. I mean, it's got all playoff action over there. They had NFL uh, draft bets. You could pick how many players were going to be from a certain conference. You could choose uh, you know, how many at a certain position. And, and now they have futures as well. NHL playoffs are over there. You got golf. You're going to have uh, uh, NBA playoffs. I, I know my Mavericks aren't in. The playoffs, they didn't make it this year. Uh, but who you got between Golden State and the Lakers? you have a favorite? Mm, I'm leaning Golden State, but LeBron seems to be on a mission. So uh, I'm going to lean, lean Golden State, but I'm not going to be surprised if, if LeBron pulls this off and has a miraculous playoff run like he's done so many times. Now, I tell you, the Lakers have found a way to turn it on just right here, right yeah. when it matters the most. I guess all of that um, – uh, load management and and like I guess that was that was for this exact reason where you can show up in the playoffs. Um, but let's take a look back. Let's go and take a look at the NFL draft. What was your thoughts um, on just how the Commanders handled things in this draft? Obviously, this is a Commander show. Believe in Commanders. What did you think? How would you grade those guys? Yeah, so I, I tweeted out that I think uh, draft grades are kind of silly. I don't know how you're supposed to judge uh, 250 players or so before they even set foot, not not just on the field, but even into their team's locker rooms. Like, I get the projections and all that, so it feels, to me, kind of silly. But what I will say is that I think the commanders addressed a lot of needs, which I think we went in hoping they would. Um, I think there were some – questionable picks or at least the order that they did some things there but um you know at the end of the day if you would have told me that they came away with secondary help with some offensive line help with a running back and a couple of linebackers slash pass rushers I would have told you that's that fills a lot of needs and uh, it makes me feel good about what they're doing and what they're heading into rookie mini camp and and then uh, the whole team mini camp with so overall I was pleased um, but when we dive into it a little bit, I think I've got some question marks there. But what about you? Well, my first thought, it, it was one that was probably what you would expect from a Ron Rivera draft. Um, you know, quality players at the positions of need, nothing too overly sexy, if you will, right? Just It wasn't like a big name. You're like, oh, man, that was the guy we had circled uh, from day one. Uh, but I think everybody that was added, you can see where they fit in with this team you know, and, and what they're expected to do. I mean, he's starting up front with Emmanuel Forbes. Uh, guy gets his hands on the football, and he puts it in the end zone. That is something yeah. that this team needs. Uh, last year, uh, the commanders were at the bottom, the bottom third of the – less than that. They were like four from the worst. They are like 28th, I think, in turnovers on defense. So you, you have a ball hawking corner as, at like Emmanuel Forbes. You expect him to come in and make an impact that way. Uh, getting Quan Martin out of Illinois, safety that – you can move around in multiple pieces and in places. 
you can see that he has he's going to have versatility and find himself a spot on this football field as well. And obviously grabbing those couple of old linemen um, that was necessary. You know, the other positions of need. They, they now they went in a different order than we thought. We thought they would go mm-hmm. one uh, offense, one defense, or vice versa. They went defense, defense, and then offense, offense uh, across the line. So um, I mean, NFL.com their first grade. I guess I guess this maybe this is a, maybe it's average of their player rankings. They had Washington at a six point three six. And Philly was the highest at 7.04 uh, for what it's worth. Um, and then when I saw the grades on NFL.com, Washington had a B. Um, had a B. And then, you know, right back smack dab in the middle. And I bet that's about right if you had oh. to give it a grade. I know you think they're stupid. Um, <laughs> the, the one thing I had to I had to remind myself of uh. is the lists are in alphabetical order. And I'm yeah. like, why you got Washington at the bottom? Right, it starts right, with right. the W. That's why. Yeah. It's, it's nothing okay. personal. It's alphabetical. Yeah. Well, so speaking of grades, I have seen that most of them have been B, uh, you know, C pluses, which I think is right about right. I, I don't think they really like hit a home run, um, but they addressed a lot of needs. So in, in like a in a vacuum, like if you, they went in with with a shopping list and they came out with just about everything that they were, were looking to find. And uh, so it's hard to be mad at that. I, I think, like you said, the order was a little odd. I, it was odd to me. Um, you know, I was I was out uh, getting dinner and I was kind of keeping up, uh, you know, with what they were going to do or what they were doing. And then when I saw a defensive back come down, I was so confused because I thought for sure that there were there were plenty of offensive linemen right around that that spot. Guys that we had seen potentially projected in the first round, like a Torrance. Um, um, is it O Torrance or is it Osiris? Osiris, Osiris yeah. Torrance, yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. like that guy, Cody Mock, well, you know, the the North Dakota guy, North Dakota State guy with no teeth. Yeah. You know, those guys were maulers that that I thought potentially would go in the first round. And I thought they made a lot of sense there. But for whatever reason, they felt like they needed to double up and get Quan Martin, who is part of a uh, Illinois secondary that has now has five guys in the NFL yeah. draft over the last two. Um, draft. So you got to think that he's impressive and you got to think that that was a priority for them. The one thing that, that does kind of frustrate me um, and it seems like it's a Ron Rivera MO is that there's a little bit, it's like he's, he insists on finding guys who play multiple positions, even Quan Martin, you know, I, I swear when they first drafted him, it, it came up as a safety and now you're not, you're seeing him more listed as more generic defensive back or cornerback. And then, you know, Ricky Stromberg, the center, played a little guard. Braden Daniels is just listed as an offensive lineman because he's played yeah. guard. He's played tackle. Ron Rivera said he'll play. He'll start off at tackle. I kind of want a guy that slots in at a position and I know where he's going to play. I get that it's important to have versatility, especially on an offensive line, especially with, you know, how many injuries they've dealt with over the last few years. But instead of guys that can shift around a little bit and play good or okay to good at a couple positions – I would I wouldn't hate getting a guy that just is really good at one position. I don't know how you feel about that or if that's changed since you played. Uh, you know, as a as a former player, I'm curious your thoughts, but that doesn't irk me. It just is is confusing sometimes to me. Well, you know, I've I've been on uh, for quite a few teams and there's always a guy who's on the roster because they can do multiple things. Sure. Um, and they find themselves onto the field one way or the other. I've, and I've on the flip side, I've seen, you know, receivers who swear that they're only an X or they are only a Z receiver. And that ends up being to their detriment. You know, it's like, you know, you could probably make the team if you knew just a couple more positions, just a couple more routes. I, I don't have a problem with versatility. I think that it 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 leads you to have, be able to be flexible um, and have some creativity with what you're going to do across the line. I mean, you look at Nick Gates, the guy had was listed at playing almost all three interior positions, left guard, right guard, center. Um, Andrew Wiley, he can play both tackles, right? Um, he, pre- predominantly right tackle, but either way, knowing that you can move people around, and, and, and frankly, that's what they did last year. And with all the injuries, they had to find a way to, you know, shuffle some things around and, and, you know, now they're just going to see who, who can fit best in each, uh, in each spot. But I will say this, they've done well over the past few drafts, Washington commanders, the front office, the, the scouting GM, they've done a great job over the past few drafts of getting players of value in round three, four or five, you know, 
they're getting good players at, at, at those picks. Uh, and I can't get mad. I mean, you look at the second round pick getting Quan Martin and you, you, you scratch your head because you're like, man, I thought it was going to be O-lineman. But I have to I have to trust the fact that I think this guy's going to be able to show up and make a huge impact. I mean, in my head, yeah. I'm it's like that. Uh, it's like that meme with the dude from Hangover and all the calculations are going across his head because I'm thinking like, right. man, OK, you've got a Derek Forrest who has a knack for the football. St. Juice has a knack for the football. Forbes is on one side. You got this guy, Quan Martin, who can move around, do a lot of things. Plus, you got Cam Curl, who can move around and do a lot of things. Um, you know, maybe you don't have to have two linebackers on the field now. Hey, can you get it done with, you know, uh, three safeties and three DB? So if I'm Jack Del Rio, you got to really think of ways to mix and match to find the best possible combination uh, from what you're going to get out of these players, and I, th- I think it's a good thing that you go with versatility. I mean, you're, 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 uh, you make a lot of sense. I just, I guess when when I when I see a third round pick, I'm automatically assuming that's a guy that's at least going to contribute, and at least may, maybe not start, but at least contribute. Like I, I'm fine with the Quan Martin pick. I think he's an athletic freak, and like I said, he's part of a defensive backfield that it just seems like all they did was lock people down and turn the ball over. So yeah. uh, I'm all about that. It's more the the offensive lineman just felt like not reaches, but it's like, are either of them going to really have a role this year? And I know it's important to have depth and I know it's important sure. to have that swing tackle. And, you know, they, they started what four centers last year. So there's, there's no telling whether Ricky Stroutenberg, you know, is not your center at some point during the season. It just feels like they're kind of projects. And, and for my third and fourth rounders, I, I'm expecting a guy, and not everybody's Terry McLaurin, but I'm expecting a guy that can come in and contribute right away. And I guess yeah. that was just a frustration, or the 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 one the one question mark. I hope these guys yeah. are maulers. I hope that they're solid on the offensive line. I just I I, I hope we're, they're not just kind of tying themselves to a bunch of projects. Really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're going to be fine. Though. I think they're going to be fine. I mean, if they were if they were the guys you wanted them to be. They would have been gone in the second round. They would have went sure. second round. You know what I mean? And it's sure. not a knock on not a knock on those guys at all. Not not a knock at all. It's just that's just the way it is. Um, they could you could get into camp, and you could just things could just fall into somebody's you know uh, fall into somebody's lap if you will. Like if mm-hmm. the, the the bricks may fall as they may, that works perfectly for Stromberg or Daniels to get on the field. They might be hella hellified players. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I I would love for Stromberg or, or Daniels to be the Terry McLaurin of the offensive line. You know, this guy that you didn't think you were going to get anything out of. And next thing you know, he's anchoring down your offensive line. Like that's that's your best bet scenario. I mean, if you're if you're expecting a third or fourth rounder to come in and start out, out the gate, that's that's probably shooting a little bit too high of expectations. Not not knocking the players. It's just that you mm-hmm. don't get picked in the third or fourth round and say, yep, this is our starter. You know, right. Well, so so we, we got kind of through round four there talking. The commanders move up in round five to take Clemson edge defender K.J. Henry. I've heard nothing but good things about this guy as a person. Seems like he got after the quarterback a little bit at Clemson. Um, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on him. But to round out the draft in the sixth round, they take Chris Rodriguez Jr., the running back out of Kentucky, Andre Jones, an edge defender who apparently was at Louisiana for six years. So he played a lot of football, and so he comes in uh, pretty experienced. So the one thing we kind of talked about, you talked about linebackers and Quan Martin. Does that allow you to make some different looks? They didn't really address the traditional, you know, um, linebacker. I mean, I think think K.J. Henry and Andre Jones on the depth chart will show up as linebackers, but they're more edge guys. Mm -hmm. So that kind of – tells me a lot and and maybe doesn't tell me anything at all when it comes to the linebackers. I mean, they might just be happy with Jamin Davis and some guys behind him. Yeah, I, I think it's going to point to if you weren't getting one of those top guys like a Lucas Van Ness or, you know, one of those top players that they're willing to go with a little bit more of an athletic uh, linebacker. You know, you saw how the combination of McCain and Curl and uh, and Forrest worked out. Now you you know McCain is obviously gone, and you could say Quan Martin steps in and, can, and be in that role. So uh, I think it just leans to be more of a nickel set, more of a you know linebacker at uh, sorry safety at linebacker type of a situation. Let those guys get closer to the line of scrimmage. You can move around who's deep, who's short. That would be the play there um, along the edge. Those two edge guys. Uh, 
especially you know Henry. It's it's this is a you know one one of the one of the two players that are currently on the roster probably aren't going to be here. Mm-hmm. That that's what it points to for me. They're they're just trying to have a little bit of an insurance. Um, you know, you got Montez Sweat's going to be up for a contract. You didn't didn't take Chase Young's fifth young fifth young fifth ra- uh, fifth year option. So. Yeah, at the end of the season, you got to make a decision. And if you're going to let one of those guys go, it's better to have an incumbent in in the in house already, rather than having to try to hope that somebody makes it through. And and KJ Henry's dad is already a uh, um, a winner in my book. He brought down the old uh, Redskins jersey with the the spear, the arrowhead. Yes, there. he did. So that was pretty awesome. So that that's 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 huge. And pops was yeah. ready for that moment. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got some friends and family at, at Clemson and and or, or Clemson fans, and I know that fans are fans, but they they really love KJ Henry. They say he's a he's a great guy. And it seems like he's just going to do whatever the coaches need him to do. So I'm excited about that. And you're right. You know, it's it was in the fifth round, but they traded up to get him. And that says something. I think they traded up. I want to say they, they moved up a, a healthy number of picks. It wasn't yeah. like two or three picks. It was, it was like 20. It was like 20 yeah, picks. Yeah. So that, that means something. I think you're right. I think that, you know, with with him and Andre Jones Jr., they're, they're looking for guys that could potentially be that diamond in the rough, could be replacements. But also, you look at it, Shaka Tony's going to be out indefinitely due to his gambling thing. Is he mm-hmm. make his way back onto the team? William Bradley King, we've seen in spurts. James Smith Williams is a solid rotation guy. I just don't think you can have enough guys that can get after the quarterback, especially in today's league. So I like those picks a, a whole lot. And I think that both of those offer some good upside. And then I'm, I'm intrigued by Chris Rodriguez Jr. We thought maybe uh, could Bijan drop to them. Obviously, the Falcons made sure that didn't happen. But Rodriguez is a solid guy who's had, I think, a bunch of 100-yard games at, at Kentucky, runs hard. Um, I heard something that he had a DUI, I guess, about a year ago that kind of had people questioning his character and all that. But mm-hmm. it, it's, he seems like a, a guy that could be – a uh, key contributor and could be a, a the the third uh, head of a three headed monster in the backfield. Yeah, they needed to add a thumper in that backfield, and you know I'm not mad at that selection. You know, being later on in the draft, you know, you get somebody that you you expect to get on the field, make a few plays here and there. Uh, you don't have to lean on them, but it's going to give you a physical presence presence in that backfield. You know, you don't have to try to hand it to Brian Robinson all the time and let him get beat up. Uh, you know, play in and play out. So now you can you know, spell in the rookie, spell in the young fella, and um, you know let him tote that note a little bit and take a little bit of reprieve off of AG. You know, so mm-hmm. we obviously be interested to see how things work out when the pads come on. You know, things change when 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 the pads get on there. But um, I'm not mad at the pick of, of Rodriguez, and I, I will say I'm I'm surprised that they didn't draft a quarterback, uh, but they did sign a quarterback undrafted free agent. So. Um, they they address the position, I, and he's seen the the uh, rumors that the commanders are are linked to Caleb Williams, and they're going to try to make a play uh, to get high enough in the draft to get Caleb Williams. And I don't know if I if I can take that because you're going to have to get at least to to suck that bad. You, you it's going to hurt <laughs> to get all the way up there to, to get yeah. Caleb Williams. Yeah, I love that he's a Commanders fan. I love that that you know there's possible connection. But you're right; it's going to be either giving up a whole lot to get up there from wherever they're at in the draft, or it's going to mean that Sam Howell was an absolute crash and burn disaster, and that's going to make for a tough 2023. My hope is that they they make a playoff run, they come up just short, and they realize they need this all world you know quarterback, and that's what uh, preempts them to make the move. But yeah, so I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to try to predict too much in the future i want sam Howell to be the guy and and to run with that and 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 we'll see but yeah i thought it was interesting too no quarterback taken i know some mocks had them taking hen and hooker even in the first round which was kind of silly um and and um yeah so I'm yeah i agree with you. no me too me too uh but yeah so they they added tim demerat from uh where did he go from fordham and then uh, Chase Bryce uh, is got an invite. Like, I, I didn't know it worked this way, but you can like accept invites to different mini camps yeah. without signing deals. So that was a that was something I learned over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, if, shoot, if the dates align, you can go and work out for a couple of teams. You know, you get invited to a mini camp. It happens after the draft, and we'll jump more into this in another episode. But 
yeah, you you can do that. And there's there's there is a thing to where if you get into like the seventh round, you're almost better off to go undrafted free agent. Right, I've reason, heard that. The reason is because you get to choose your team. Now, if you, you know, we'll use a basketball analogy. If you hop out and you're a free agent and the, you know, the Golden State Warriors are here knocking on your door or the Houston Rockets, a team that's at the bottom of the barrel right yeah. now, you're like, hmm, which camp would I rather go to? Now, yeah, sure, you might be able to make the roster better um, in Houston, but, hey, you know, Golden State, if I can make the roster over here, I got a chance to get in the ring. So being an, being an undrafted free agent isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it gives you a little bit of options, gives you a few options. Yeah, so they signed a bunch of undrafted free agents, and, and like you said, we'll get into rookie mini camp. So I think there are some sh- intriguing names there that maybe we can talk about during that rookie mini camp episode. I saw a guy from UCLA that can absolutely fly, but it's exciting to see these guys getting the chance and getting the chance to put on an NFL uniform. And um, at that point, you know, uh, you kind of know the jersey numbers of the of the drafted guys, but at that point, everybody's a rookie, and you, you got a chance to to show out. And uh, I want to hear you talk about that more. But okay, as much as I hate NFL draft grades, I want to end on this. If you had to, if you had to sum up the seven rounds, the seven picks of the Commanders over this past weekend with one word, what would that word be? And I can go first to give you. A you, second go to first. Think you go about first. It. You go uh, first. You go first. I think my my draft grade is weird, and I I don't I don't mean that negatively. I think being weird can be good. I think it can mean creative and that kind of thing. I just mean weird. I, I think it started with you know not going after Christian Gonzalez. We talked a little bit about that. He kind of seemed like the consensus you know next best corner after Witherspoon. Going with Forbes felt a little weird. I've grown to like the guy. I love what I see from him. And then following it up with another defensive back, kind of like we saw, following it up with two project linemen, linemen, um, and and you know not getting a tight end or not getting a quarterback, it was just weird. And, and yeah. I don't mean that as a negative thing; it just wasn't what I would have done. So maybe not weird, but unconventional is kind of my definition of weird in this. So uh, that's what I got for the seven picks and the seven rounds. My word to describe the Commanders draft would be solid. It's solid. I, I think you've addressed the needs that you knew you had coming into the, the draft. You didn't get uh, coerced or uh, drawn in with the with the urge to j- trade up. I think that that was big. It's probably something that a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people are even thinking much about it. With, with so much movement going on in front of you, I, I feel like you would have had to have had the one time cross your mind to say, maybe I need to trade up uh, just to secure our guy. Uh, and they didn't, you know, so I think it's a solid draft. You check a lot of boxes at positions of need. Uh, you get a little bit of depth and now you're going to get guys to get out there and, and showcase what they can do. So I think it was a solid draft. I had to put a number on it. It's like 87.5 or something like that. You know, you did a good job. I'm not mad at you. There's a, you know areas of improvement and I'm sure we'll see, you know, Emmanuel Forbes, his performance later on in the season will make people uh, feel confident that they made the right decision. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see it. I, I can't say it's bad or or awful or good or great. It's just got they got to go out there and they got to display it, and I think that they will. So uh, exciting stuff! Seven new members drafted to the Commanders, all those un- undrafted free agents as well, and we'll see them all in action. Can't wait to see what they do um and uh see see what's next for them so uh, if you want to put some money down commanders and and you're interested in what they did and that's enough to sway you can always look at some futures on bet online and use our code bleav for a 50 percent welcome bonus i even saw that speaking of caleb williams he is the odds on favorite on bet online to be the first overall draft pick him and drake may are up there marvin harrison jr so wow. if you want to be crazy and go make a, a prediction a year in the future you can do uh-huh. that at bet online dot a g if you're crazy hey, enough <laughs> hey well i'll tell you what i've i've seen marvin harrison jr up close and in person worked with him um before he went to ohio state kid can okay. play yeah kid can play um so Some, anywho someone said it was like seeing next year's car model just sitting in the garage while you're shopping for <laughs> for one this year so you're i like, am what, very intrigued what, by that guy you're like what is that one you're like oh that's that's not that's yeah not you shit. can't you're see like, that yet can I wait? Yeah. <laughs> I'll walk until then. Oh, man. Make sure y'all check us out on social media, too. We're on Twitter, 
That's where we're talking football. We're on Instagram as well. And we got a little TikTok going as well. I, I didn't follow our TikTok. Let's we got go. like seven, seven, like one of them got like 700 views. I was very impressed with our TikTok presence. So um, check us out over there on TikTok. No dancing, just straight action. We're getting right to it. And you can also tune in on all your favorite uh, streaming platforms as well. Sirius XM Studio, uh, Watch Stadium, uh, and Believe TV is out there. Believe Football. Check that out as well. All right, well, we're going to continue. And if you haven't uh, checked out Bet Online, head to betonline.ag. Use our code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for a 50% welcome bonus. Uh, we're talking NFL draft and, and our draft reaction. And you can already make picks on next year's draft. You can see how odds have changed with new players on all the NFL teams, what their chances are to win the division, win the conference, win the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. You can check all of that out at betonline.ag again our code is b-l-e-a-v so in our last episode we talked specifically about the commanders we are believing commanders um you can you can check out what we we talked about there with what we thought about the commanders we each gave them a word to describe and grade their draft now just kind of going generic with the nfl draft reaction uh anthony it was a lot of fun i I know you watched into the weekend and it wasn't just a one night thing for you just like it wasn't for me um we watched all the all the the rounds i probably watched way too much my family's probably getting annoyed but what what are some of your overall prevailing thoughts of the nfl draft over those uh three days it felt like it was a really good draft overall just from everybody all teams seem to do uh what what was right for the time? You know, the one pick that had me scratching my head was early on when we see Jameer Gibbs go uh, early to Detroit. That was the one that kind of was like, eh, what? You know, but outside of that, I think teams picked well within their needs. They picked players that were uh, like Philly hit the jackpot a couple of times, uh, unfortunately, yeah. but teams did a good job. I, th- I think it was delivered well. I, I think that the uh, presentation was good. Um and that first round was really, really exciting. I I was on the edge of my seat for that that very first night, uh, just watching the way teams were maneuvering. I really loved what D'Amico Ryan's did uh, over there in Houston, just trading back up for Will Anderson. Uh, and I think that sets the tone. That sets the tone for the AFC South. It really does. He's an aggressive coach. He's the aggressive defense, and he's going to make an aggressive play to go get his defensive leader in Will Anderson. So just watch out, Jaguars. Watch out, AFC South. Because the Texans are coming. Yeah, I thought there were some interesting picks all around. You mentioned Jameer Gibbs, the running back, Bijan Robinson going in the top 10, and in the fall of some quarterbacks. We saw in some mock drafts, and I even got suckered in. I thought uh, five quarterbacks would go in the first round. But other than the big three in the top four picks, uh, another quarterback didn't go until the second round, and Will Levis, and then Hennon Hooker didn't even go until the third round. So I thought the quarterbacks' uh, choices and – and, and things were, were interesting. You mentioned the AFC South. Could Will Levis compete with an aging Ryan Tannehill for a job in, at Tennessee? Uh, Hendon Hooker behind Jared Goff in Detroit. So I thought there were some interesting placements. But, yeah, for me, the dominating thought was, man, those freaking Philadelphia Eagles. We talked about I had a bad feeling that they were going to get a, a running back, and I was right. I, we just didn't mention – the guy that they ended up getting, DeAndre Swift, was a mm-hmm. was a huge uh, draft trade. What was that? The second day of yeah. the draft, they go and get him for a fourth round pick, and the Eagles just continued to attack success. It would have been easy for them to kind of sit back um, and make those picks, which were already you know feel like home runs. But on top of that, they they went and addressed other places where they they had already signed a Rashad Penny and they they'd already they already had Boston Scott in their backfield, but they went and got even better with DeAndre Swift. Um, I felt like the Eagles, among a couple other teams, just really, as you mentioned, with the, the Texans, attack success. And it's um yeah, I mean, they're the real deal and they're going for it. Yeah. And they they feel like just getting to the Super Bowl is not enough. They they want to get over that hump, and that is scary to see as a a team uh, in the same division as them. It, it really is. I mean, overall, I think the division did well. You know, I think the division did pretty well. They addressed a few spots. I, if I if I had to pick who who got better the most, I th- would think Philly did. Uh, you just on on paper, just by their first round, some of the players that they got, and you got to you have to include that trade. I think that they got 
they probably improved the best. Um, you know, Washington, though, I think Washington was probably second on that list of how they got better um, simply because of the DB help, uh, you know, with, with uh, Forbes and with Martin. Those two guys coming in, fill in a cu- couple of spots on defense that are uh, pressing needs. And, you know, filling in with those old linemen, uh, that, that, that helps check a couple of boxes as well. But I think Washington is second in, in the division of how, they got, how they've improved. Uh, just from this draft alone, um, kind of like what the Giants did. You know, they went and got Jalen Hyatt, got Deontay Banks from Maryland. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, there's going to be a couple of uh, there's going there's going there's going to be some 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 battles out there this year. The NFC East is going to be another exciting year, but I think overall Philly led the way. Washington was second, and who improved the most? And then uh, the Giants rolled rolled in in third. Yeah, the Cowboys kind of felt like they were all over the place. I think they really got uh, – I feel like a couple guys went probably right before they were trying to pick. It's just what it mm. kind of seemed like. Um, I will say they they had the the moment of the draft for me when uh, Deuce Vaughn's dad got to call him and tell him, ask him if he wants to go to work with him. Yeah. As much as I can't stand the Cowboys, man, that tug, tugged at my heart. That was so cool. Uh, yeah, it's one man. of the many cool moments to see from the draft that just thinks it was the Cowboys. But, man, what an incredible moment. It was. You literally took the words out of my mouth. Is when he was like, hey, man, you want to you want to come to work with me next week? Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a love. I love incredible. it. And like, he's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all. I was like, oh, yeah. man, that's amazing. I mean, it's ha- I'm happy for everybody who gets drafted, you know, and mm-hmm. everybody gets signed, obviously, after the fact. Um it's it's such a it's a dream come true. I mean, something that's literally been you know, 50, uh, probably fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, more, eighteen, nineteen, twenty years in the making. You know, obviously, whenever they first started to f- follow football, mind you, no fifteen year olds were drafted. Um, yeah. But just this, all that culmination of the hard work, the off seasons, the driving, the practices, the lacing up shoes. Oh, you forgot your cleats? I'll go get your cleats. All of that stuff has come to this moment uh, to get drafted in the NFL. And um, I'm, I'm happy for those guys. I'm excited for it. Yeah, for me, it's fun. Like, obviously, you kind of think you're going to hit with your first round or you kind of feel like, and it's not the case, but it feels like they're the given. But it's fun to look back, you know, after a couple of years and see where some of these studs ended up going in like the fourth, fifth, sixth round. And yeah. now seeing some of these players that are picked in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, you're kind of like, is that going to be the next George Kittle? Is that yeah. going to be a guy that contributes for years, even though he was drafted on the third day? That's kind of the yeah. fun part for me is is more so than grades, just kind of seeing the fit for guys and 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 how exciting and learning about some of the guys that they talk about when when they're drafted. That's that's the best part. Yeah, getting to hear those stories, get to connect with them a little bit. You know, you actually start to you know grant, uh, grow an affinity towards a player just based on your story, on their story, what they've come through, what they've overcome. Um, uh, what what is your mm, if you can pinpoint one? Do you have somebody that you think would be a probably most likely to just have the most success in their first year? Like you know. So maybe a second day, third day guy. Is anybody that point that you you kind of had on your wish list or one of your favorite players coming into the draft, um, and then you think that they're going to have some success in their new position, even if it's a first round or two. We don't have to, you, you know, we don't have to go all the way, you know, deep into the draft to figure that one out. Ah, man, I gotta think. I, okay. I feel I'll like I'll go first. I can go yeah. first. I'll go first. Um, and I'll say this: I'll, I'll put mine in the first round. I'm going to put mine in the first round, and it's Jackson Smith Najigba. I think that he's going to have a lot of success out there in Seattle. Um, he's coming up behind a Tyler Lockett, great receiver, veteran, uh, good head on his shoulders. Um, he's going to be able to be a, a role model for him. Then he's also going to be able to learn from DK Metcalf, physical specimen, uh, but understanding that DK is going to take a lot of that pressure. Um, yeah that he's not going to have to deal with. So, you know, the Ohio State receivers have have had a lot of success in this NFL <laughs> as of late. Um, obviously, one's in Washington. So I don't see why uh, Mr. You know Jackson Smith and the Jigba wouldn't have any success out there in Seattle. So I'm excited to see what he does. Coming off of that Rose Bowl and then a, a season that was kind of marred by injuries, now he's going to get drafted. He's been drafted. I'm excited to see what he can do out there in Seattle. Yeah. 
That that's a good one. Uh, I'm gonna kind of stick with the, the family theme, and then I got one that's kind of a, a wild card, kind kind of along the lines of what you're saying. But I thought it was so cool that Joey Porter Jr. ended up with the Steelers, just like his dad. That that's a really cool moment, kind of talking about the the dad thing and and yeah. all that. So it's kind of so cool to see the next um, generation of Porters going to the Steelers. And then a guy that I hope you know um, for his sake and his teammates' sake has a has a good career and is really solid is tank Dell. I don't know if you heard this story that CJ Stroud uh, gets drafted number two overall by the Texans. And apparently he, he formed a really good relationship um, with Houston wide receiver tank Dell Houston uh, Cougars, but now Houston Texans wide receiver tank Dell that he went on and, and vouched for him and they ended up drafting him in the third round. I think that would be so cool to see him work out him and CJ Stroud kind of, forming this friendship and then being drafted on the same team for a Texans team that, you know, needs some, some playmakers out there. I think it would just be really cool if he, a third round receiver like Terry McLaurin could be that guy and yeah. could have some success after, after, you know, one of the studs kind of vouch for him. I thought that, I thought that would be kind of a cool story too. That that would be big. And then having that chemistry out of the gate, you yeah. know, like you, you realize a lot of, I mean, a lot of these guys know each other and they, mm-hmm. You know, obviously Philly picked everybody from the same uh, co- same college, but a lot of these guys know each other just from competition and growing up and going to different camps throughout all the years. And you you see each other, you know, have success. They follow each other on social media. So um, it's 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 more like a brotherhood seeing somebody else get drafted. You know, it's not as many. I don't want to say there's not as many like rivalries. I'm sure they're out there, but you know, it's good to it's good to be able to go into that experience with some people that you know. Um, and, and I, I mean, hey, I, I didn't get drafted. I didn't get drafted. So I don't know what that feeling is like to be able to hear your name called, get that phone call, right. all that stuff. But um, I know that it has to feel good to be able to experience it with some friends. I know that much. Yeah, experience it with some people that yeah. you know and that you've competed with your entire life. I thought it was cool, uh, you know, kind of seeing the commander specifically, and I, I'm willing to bet other coaches did as well. But Ron Rivera, on almost all the calls that he had with the guys they were drafting, he uh, he made sure to 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 you know talk to them. And I know it happens a little bit before we see on the TV and all that, but he made sure to hang up with them before their name was called on the TV. I thought that was cool because, like you said, it, it's got to be such a cool feeling whether you're pick one or you're pick. 250 whatever it is uh to see your name up on tv whether or not that's the the highlight of your career or just the start of of something special in the nfl it is really it's got to be really cool to to have your name called like that and it's exciting for all those guys i thought it was cool that ron rivera kind of made sure to 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 hang up and be like hey go enjoy this and then we'll get down to the nitty-gritty right after that yeah because it's gonna get nitty it's gonna get gritty (laughs) <laughs> the, the heat turns up, all that love fest and all that little handshakes and high fives. It goes away quickly. It's time to place on them cleats and get to work. But uh, no, that is that's that's respectable, man. Like, go enjoy that moment with your family, with your friends, uh, and, and get to hear your name. I mean, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You don't get to have it twice. Uh, that's a very 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 special moment, man. A lot of dreams coming true uh, just just over this past weekend. I'm well, excited. So let me ask you. Um, we talked about the the Texans. The Eagles, um, specifically, uh, I think there was a, uh, I think there were a couple of uh, not as big a names as as DeAndre Swift traded. I think Adam Troutman went from New Orleans to Denver, so we saw we didn't see as yeah. many player trades as we thought would happen, but we did see some teams be very aggressive. Whether it be Houston moving up from twelve to three to pick twice in the top three, uh, whether it be Philadelphia and their moves. Um, I heard a quote that Martin Mayhew for the commanders, and, and I want to kind of tie the commanders into this league wide discussion that he said he was kind of, I think he almost gave away too much, but he was saying that he kind of wished they were a little more aggressive, whether that means to move up or trade for a player. I don't know exactly. And I think he kind of quieted down once he kind of said that. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about the commanders not, you know, moving up, not, not, not to move up just for moving up sake, but when you see teams like the Texans, like the Eagles, like some of these other teams kind of attacking success, does that worry you uh, for the commanders or is that just a, another strategy or a different way of doing things? You know, I don't think it worries me at all that they weren't, you know, 
quote unquote aggressive. They weren't trying to go out there and do, I don't know, jump into the top 10. I, you know, who knows what they were going to do if they would have made some of those you know decisions if they done if they had done that. I mean, hell, you had Christian Gonzalez fall right to 16 and then you went in another direction. It's not a problem at all. Um, I, I feel like being that aggressive, number one, that isn't. That probably isn't Ron Rivera's mo, even though he's River wrote yeah. Ron, and you know, hell, I think coming off of last year, they they rolled the dice and, and made a risk to go and, and acquire Carson Wentz, and that didn't work sure. out well. Um, and when you look at ownership changes, and is this your last season? Are you going to get to coach the people that you know? Like at that point, maybe it's like, hey, I don't need to necessarily be aggressive and jump up there. I, I'm I like I wouldn't have wanted to be aggressive. And and end up having let's say they, they jump up and grab a quarterback, and said quarterback, you know, isn't the guy. But then you also didn't get to fill in these other positions like you're going to have with a Quan Martin and with some of these offensive linemen. You know what I mean? I think yeah. you lose that draft capital. And I'm I'm just willing to be patient because I've been saying it and pounding the table for a year or two, almost a, almost two years that this team is wasn't one player away. And they're yeah. so, 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 so close right now. Like Sam Howell, if he comes and lights it up, boom, you, you can call it lightning in a bottle. Because I think you're going to have a lot of the other pieces put together. If that defense gets back to that 2020 form, that you're going to have some things to really, really work with. So them not being over uh, aggressive, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to talk about if you don't know what, they're, what they were going to go up and get. Right. You know, I mean, seeing those linebackers go like Luke and Va- Lucas Van Ness, didn't expect him to go at 12, mm-hmm. you know? So like, I feel some of, if, if you weren't aggressive to jump into 10 up to up in the top 10, get ahead of Philly and, you know, try to get a Jalen Carter for whatever reason, like some of those other teams not picking who we would have thought they would have picked makes it okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess for me, it like, and maybe I'm projecting, but like, and I don't know that the commanders necessarily needed a DeAndre Swift, but to see, you know, a premier running back go for only a, a fourth round pick, it's like, well, the commanders could have done that. And, and to see some of these moves that, that for teams that, that seem to be aggressive and seem to be attacking success and not being complacent, I agree that I don't think it's, it's, it's Ron Rivera's MO, but every now and then I feel like they could, and, and maybe you're right. Maybe they feel burnt and maybe they, they don't trust themselves after the Carson Wentz debacle. Uh, but I, I, I kind of tweeted this out. I was like, I'm going to be so frustrated if and when Devin White is traded to the Eagles or, you know, the Seahawks for a, a middle round pick when the commanders obviously could use some linebacker help. They really, in my opinion, only have one starting caliber linebacker on their roster. It's just that kind of thing. And maybe I'm projecting some negativity there, but it does feel like some teams are trying actively and more maybe aggressively to to get better where the commanders are kind of letting it come to them. And I wonder if they need to switch that up a little bit. And I'm not saying just to move around the draft board or trade players because you want to take a risk on people, but I think that there is some validity to that, and we just saw the Eagles go to the Super Bowl, and instead of you know sitting back and letting the draft come to them, they move up, they move around, and they you know, yeah. way better. So it, you know, I, I, maybe I'm just being jealous of what other people have. No, you know, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I just, I just, I just feel like Washington has taken a a route that has been a slow cooker. You know, we're gonna build this thing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, you know, and that and that's how it's gonna get built now. We, we've talked about it before. Are they in the? Were they? Will they make a play for Caleb Williams? You know, I mean, hell, I'd love to see him make a move if they if they happen to find their way at sixteen and they package everything up and try to jump up and get this kid. Like, I wouldn't be mad at it in that situation. I'm. I, I tend to. I tend to play be a little bit more conservative in how I'm going to handle my assets. So, um, you know, I, I feel you. I, I yeah. totally do. I totally uh, do. I mean, yeah, I, and, I, I would, I'm sorry. I would hate to see, I would hate, just like, I would hate to see a Devin White or even a Patrick Queen who they're not picking up to his fifth year option. I would hate to see those guys get traded for, you know, late third day three draft well, picks in Washington. Yeah, for pennies and nobody jumped in there. So I'd yeah. be upset about that. It, it just also on a separate note, and, and who knows for sure what the future holds. Maybe, maybe Josh Harris comes in and loves Ron Rivera, loves the, the, the trajectory of the team, but this has felt um, 
you know, I see the Eagles attacking success. I see the Texans attacking success. You know, we saw, uh, you know, the, the Seahawks had a had a diamond in the rough in Tariq Woolen at, at corner. And what do they do? Their first pick is another corner. You know, I, I see these teams that kind of just seem to to building, um, uh, building, you know, on some of their strengths. And I just thought this was not not an underwhelming, but not a like, overly glamorous draft for for a regime that could be fighting for their jobs and maybe that's where i'm coming from and maybe i'm putting too much into that but it just felt not as uh not as flashy and not that flashy is always the right way it just felt a little odd the way it it worked out for the commanders especially when some other teams were making moves i guess that's my my piece on it i i feel you 100 percent. i get you i get you and i but and that's why i was saying in our previous episode i was sitting on pins and needles expecting them to make a jump up to like 12 or something like that, just to find a way to get a little bit closer to the top, just because there were some Joss, there was some jostling going on. I mean, Im- immediately Houston, Houston had to be on the phone with Arizona while they were <laughs> on the phone with CJ Stroud. You know what I mean? They're like, Hey man, call Arizona on your other, on the other phone and let them know we want to move up to, to, to three. You know, like that yeah. had to have happened, you know. So once that happened, you're like, oh, crap. Hold on a second. This is nobody had this projected like this. Let's see. Yeah. Um, and and from for your argument, jumping in right there when it when it was starting to get a little bit spicy. And there was a lot of teams that would have been willing to make a move. And I think they could have jumped up and, you know, probably grabbed a little higher graded player. Um, but. I also have to applaud their patience of of sitting back and saying, let's let this thing come to us. Um, Yeah. On both, both. And this is a weird situation. Both sides, both things can be right, folks. Both both things can be right. Yeah. Maybe they should have been a little bit more aggressive, but I did like that they didn't give up any picks next year. I don't believe. I think they used a couple extra picks that they had to move up to get KJ Henry. Um, Mm -hmm. But I saw a team uh, already trading, I think, a 2025 draft pick so yes i don't want to i don't want to mortgage that kind of that's what that's that what philly strange. gave yeah that's yeah what philly gave. they gave up a 2025 to detroit i'm like that's a whole two years away right right but, and, and i get like, I, hey. I get a i get you have a window and you want to attack that window but man i would love It'll be interesting to see what that 2025 pick turns into. So overall, we, we kind of did it with the commander specifically. But if you're thinking of the whole three-day event, all seven rounds, all 32 teams, what's your overarching um, kind of thought, word, um, just what you'll remember from the 2023 draft? Hmm. I'm I'm gonna remember all of the, uh, the 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 creative presenters that showed up, especially later on when they started having guests guests come up yeah. and, and present the picks. There was a lot of teams and a lot of fans and a lot of players that were really you know riling up the Kansas City Kansas City uh, uh, faithful. Yeah. So that that was most memorable to me just to hear all of all of that. I mean, obviously Drew Pearson has been doing it for years. He's been really digging in. Uh, on teams and and the other thing I want to remember the most is I caught this on day three. Uh, it was Mel Kiper's fortieth draft, and everybody was you know Ch- I think it was Charles Davis and um, you know Todd McShay. They were just going on telling all these stories about uh, Mel Kiper and just you know how he does his job and how it got started. And I mean that that's the guy's voice that you hear. That's the guy's voice that when you're in high school and in, in college and you're watching the draft. It's his name. He's like, die, 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 die. Look, this Armstrong kid out of West Texas a and He's fast. He's long. He, da, 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 da. he can run the deep ball. He can run all the routes. Like, that's what you want to hear. You want to hear your voice, your name, I'm sorry, on with his voice talking about you in the draft. So congrats to Mel Kuyper. 40 years. That's amazing. 40, I think it was 43rd overall draft. Yeah. I mean, I'm hell, I'm 40. He's been doing the draft since I've been – literally the whole time. So – yeah. 40 that's years true. for me, 40 years for you. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. He he was like before they went to like multi-channel coverage, it was Mel Kuyper and whoever the host was that you know at ESPN. That those were like that was it. So yeah, he definitely has like kind of turned this into the huge event that it is. Yeah. I think that's what I, I always love is seeing the event and like seeing dreams come true. I've said that from the beginning, whether it's first round or seventh round or even undrafted, you know, like there there's a chance to to go be special for uh, a team and 
I'm excited to see how it works out and how, you know, looking back on like, Oh my gosh, that guy went in the fifth round. How did he last yeah. that long? And he had this hall of fame career. And then yeah. I thought the cool thing, they started uh, day three with a stat when I was watching on ESPN, it started with a stat um, and said, uh so and so percent are you know of players in on the 2022 rosters come from the first round so and so from the second and third round and then 64 percent from the fourth through seventh round and undrafted and to me that kind of said yes that's the biggest portion of the draft obviously a lot of guys are going to come from that portion but to me it's it's not like these are throwaway picks on those last days and those are contributors that we've seen for the commanders and we've seen across the league those guys come in and have huge roles and end up being studs for teams. So I think it's very cool that while they didn't spend a whole lot of time on, you know, on those guys in the later rounds, those guys are just as important and are just as important when a team is hoisting the Lombardi trophy. So it's exciting. And I know in our next episode, we'll talk about a little bit about undrafted free agents and rookie mini camps. But uh, to me, it's just always the excitement of, of guys getting the chance really it's like they're, they're getting their first jobs, right? And they're going yeah. out and a chance to prove themselves, whether they are uh, pick 1.1 or if they're pick 7.32, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I'm excited about that. And and that's kind of what I'll, I'll remember from this draft. And I always like to try to guess like, oh, that guy's that guy has a name that I feel like we're going to be talking about in 10 years, wondering how he left to the sixth round. So that's always fun for me. Um, but the draft is, is just kind of the, the start of the new league season, right? Like now we know the yep. 20, we know the guys that are going to make up the teams of the 2023, 20, 24 rosters. And uh, from here on out, it's the chase to the, to the trophy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I tell you, um, there's always an undrafted free agent that's going to show up and uh, make a splash as well. Uh, you can bet on that and you can also bet on futures and you can bet on NBA you can bet on NHL playoffs over there at Bet Online using our code Believe B L E A V. Get that fifty percent welcome bonus. Uh, shout out to those guys always sponsoring us and taking care of us. Make sure we're here, uh, showing doing this for y'all. So shout out to the That's folks right. over there at Bet Online. But now, let's hit this thing up. We're talking about what are rookie mini camps like. That's what's coming up next uh, for these newly drafted rookies and and. Um, the, the, the start dates are a little bit different if you have a new head coach or not. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a new head coach, then you, they can start a little bit earlier. You get to get in a little bit earlier so you can get acclimated and try to teach a whole new system, so on and so forth. But uh, rookie mini camps, those, these happen directly after the draft. Um, you know, sometimes basically the, the few days after the few days after the last day of the draft, uh, maybe early even that next that next week. Uh, and that's where your first time to get all your rookies uh, into the building. You're able to get any undrafted free agents into the building. You're able to bring in, frankly, there's some, there are going to be some veterans there as well. Um, like, you, like, hell, I could get invited to a rookie mini camp if, if somebody yeah. wanted to give me a workout. I happened in Cleveland. Like I went to, I was there and Justin Gilbert was, uh, Justin Gilbert, just, uh, Johnny Manziel. Like I was there with those two kids. So you're going to see a lot of faces, a lot of names, you know, people that are, they didn't hear their name called during the draft. They're going into rookie mini camp. So first time to see these guys on the field, first time they get to deal with NFL coaching. Um, it's, it's an exciting time. Have you ever, have you followed many rookie mini camps? Um, I tend to just kind of, to be honest, before diving really into the NFL, I kind of just would tune in and kind of try to get uh reports on how the draft picks were doing you know how does he look out there you know what is what does that guy look like once he finally put the pads on but now for me it's kind of like trying to see like for the most part it's not guaranteed but you kind of think that most if not all of the draft picks are going to make the team right but so for me it's kind of looking now at that undrafted free agent list like are there any guys here that you know, for whatever reason, like, you know, coming back from an injury or just undersized a little bit, is there a diamond in the rough that could come out there and be the next Anthony Armstrong could be a guy that, that wasn't drafted and can be a huge part of what the, the commanders are going to do. So that's kind of what I, I tend to focus on now. I mean, I just want to see what the guys look like out there. Uh, but, but I've not actually followed kind of what goes on on the ins and outs um, of a rookie mini camp. Man, rookie mini camps are, they're exciting. I mean, it's like a mini training camp, like a really small training camp. I'm like, I got a playbook over here. Um, it's gigantic. This is a 
this is something that you aren't going to have to do in your rookie mini camp. Three, four inches of, of paper. Um, they don't give you all of that, but there's just going to be a few bits of installation. And it goes from the very basics. Hey, this is how we line up in the huddle. This is how we break the huddle. This is how we call the plays. Um, here's a play call. Get used to it because this is what you're going to hear for the entire summer. Um, and it's for coaches to set expectations. And really, like you mentioned, those undrafted free agents, this is a chance for you to get out there and try to turn some heads. If you've gotten mm-hmm. an invite and you've made it up there, congratulations. You know, you're 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 in the NFL uh, for the time being. You may not be on that that roster or the, uh, under contract just yet, but you're in the NFL for a little bit. You, you're in the door. And sometimes that's all the opportunity that you need. Go make a play, catch a deep ball here or there, hustle around like 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 it's your like it's your last chance to play football because it very well could be. Yeah. You got to put it out there all on the line. Rookie mini camps are, I mean, it's 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 almost like your last lifeline if if you're an undrafted guy because you never know you may not get another opportunity. All right, so let me ask you: Are are there guys that maybe try too hard, knowing that it's their last shot, or does it feel like you know you kind of excuse that, knowing that guys are 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 hopefully you know getting one last opportunity, or are there? I guess, for lack of a better term, are there obvious tryhards out there? Oh, uh, always. There's always going to be somebody who's like, man, I'm going 100% every single rep. I don't care. Um, And whereas you may think that that's a good thing, if the coaches distinctly said this is a half-speed drill, this is a walkthrough, um, you're probably better off going going slow and following what the coaches tell you to do. Follow that tempo. Follow that speed. Uh, but yeah, I, I used to always look at down the line and be like, oh, there you go. So, okay. Yeah, it goes so and so. Hey, switch with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like you were scared of me. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't feel like having to have a full speed collision right now. It's just a walk. Right. You know what I mean? Because, right. um, because so, frankly, there are some times where there'll be a guy that they, they're going faster than what's prescribed and they make you look bad. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, now we now now we got a little jostling that we got to do. We got to we got to handle this. So um, they ain't going to fight, but I'm going to get I'm going to get you back later on because you're making me look bad. So those things do happen out there. They really do. Um, try hard. are always going to be around. I well, mean, you love the effort, though. love the effort. Yeah, absolutely. So well, we know that the draft picks Forbes, Martin, Stromberg, Daniels, Henry, Rodriguez, Jr. And Andre Jones, Jr. for the. um for the commanders, but they, they draft, they uh, signed uh, some undrafted free agents. So I was going to go over this list real quick. And then I think they kind of gave us a hint as to when they're going to have their rookie mini camp. So they signed wide receiver, Casimir Allen, wide receiver, Zion Bowens, offensive lineman, Mason Brooks, quarterback, Tim Demerat, safety, Xavier Henderson, Joshua Pryor is a defensive end wide receiver, Jalen sample safety, Kendall Smith, cornerback, DJ Sturgis, wide receiver, Mitchell Tinsley, War number five at Penn State and is a wide receiver, just like Jahan Dotson from last year. So could okay. they get two number fives from Penn State? Uh, Bryson Tremaine is a wide receiver and cornerback Nick Whiteside. So all those guys have a chance to prove themselves as undrafted free agents, similar to, to you, Anthony. And then I noticed on commanders.com where I'm reading this list, that the players will not officially sign with the team until they pass their physicals on May 11th, which makes me think that the commanders will fall in that second window of, of those available dates. I think it's May, uh, like 12th, was it? 15th or something like yeah, that. I'm, ass- I'm assuming they, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to go to a rookie mini camp without your undrafted free agents, but maybe I'm no. wrong. Yeah. No, 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 you got to have uh, some decent numbers. So quick story time. My first, my draft was in 2008. Obviously I went undrafted. Uh, I got an invite to a rookie mini camp from the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, I don't think I knew that. I don't yeah. think I knew that. You didn't okay. know that? Yeah, I don't I was think in your so. backyard, man. You oh, were wow. like elementary back we in probably, those days. Yeah, I probably drove by on the way. So the Falcons probably at that point had moved. But Flowery there was a Mc- Branch. Okay, yeah, they moved up to Flowery, Flowery Branch. But near my house, there used to be a McDonald's where you could sit at the McDonald's and watch uh, Falcons practices. They had a little oh, facility, wow. I think, before they really, you know, d- invested into it. So yeah. it was that – is a pointless story. But anyway, I did not know that the Falcons flowery yeah. branch. Yep. Right. Up yeah. the road from us. I was down there and I failed my physical. Mm. I failed my physical. So I, had, I feel like you don't ever hear about the failed physicals. You just kind of hear, you know, every now and then you do, but you, you hear like a physical is just like an, 
on an automatic check mark, but obviously yeah. that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, I had I had a, I had a uh, I had just gotten out of a cast from a surgery. I had fused a bone in my wrist. I got injured my senior year of college. Played the last month with the, with a broken wrist and torn ligament, and had surgery and had j- literally just gotten out. Probably maybe like two weeks prior to going down to this mini camp. And they failed me because of that. They're like, yeah, you can't, you, you're not cleared for football right now. And so they sent me all the way back to West Texas. And that started me having to go play flag football to then get to go to Odessa and then work that journey. Um, so yeah, the rookie mini camps, that opportunity was there for me. And then I failed that physical and I got sent back home. Um, but I do have a couple of friends and teammates who did, you know, they may have never made it back into the NFL. They had a rookie mini camp and that was it. The only thing they got was just some shorts and a t-shirt and some memories. Um, and you know, I, I turned it into something, not saying that they didn't, but you know, I, I decided I was like, nah, I need to get back to this league. So yeah, I started down there in ATL started down there in Atlanta. Did not know that. So obviously it doesn't work out in Atlanta. I think you kind of told this story before on the podcast, but hey, we, we're getting new listeners, hopefully. So that is true. What, what did the, the journey look like from there um, moving on past, sure. I guess, your technically rookie season in 2008? Well, you know, I guess I wasn't technically a rookie. I wasn't on any rosters, but following that that year, the rest of 08, I was back in school finishing you know, my degree, uh, started working out, you know, more and uh, I was in a little bit of a funk. I can't lie. I was a little, little down in the dumps. But I started working out a little more. Ended up going to Vegas to play in a flag football tournament with some friends. I took a punt to the house and had some some good plays. And I was like, man, I can do this football thing. Still, I'm going to give it a try. And I had started doing some job interviews for an insurance company. And I turned that stuff down. And I decided to go play in Odessa uh, for the Roughnecks in the Intense Football League. Packed up my little Acura Integra and nice. drove drove down I twenty seven to uh, Odessa and and just we just figured it out from there. I told myself every year you got to graduate, you got to move up a league, you're not staying two years in the same place, and that's pretty much what I did. I moved up from Odessa, uh, skipped a week to go to a tryout and uh, it was in here in the Dallas area. I ran my first four two, ran like a four two six, nice. a couple of them. Um, so got some heads turning from some arena teams. Ended up eventually signing with the Dallas Desperados. They were the of the arena league, um, and they were owned by Jerry Jones. Wow, I, did so, not, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So I, I've it's since 06, 06 and 07, I was with the Desperados, and so I'm, I'm. We would literally work out at Texas Stadium. There were times we would work out at Valley Ranch. That's where the Cowboys' previous facility was. Um, we would go into the, you know, into Valley Ranch after uh, the Cowboys would leave. So, I mean, I would seen Jason Witten's and the Marion Barber's rest in peace, you know, Felix Jones's, Miles Austin's, a lot of those guys um, in there because, you know, obviously owned by the same team. Uh, Will McClay was the head coach of the Desperados. He was a scout for the Cowboys. So he would always pitch his players. Well, Washington, never, uh, Dallas never, never picked me up. I eventually made my way down to Miami. Got to Miami in 2008. And that's where I first uh, I was on the practice squad. I didn't make it on the field until I got uh, all the way up to Washington in 09 and, and on the field eventually in 2010. So literally two yeah, – my draft was what I say, 05? My draft was 05. I think I said 08 earlier. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's a much much better story. Yeah, about almost five years after my draft, I finally made it onto the field. About three years after my draft, I made it into the NFL. So – it's a story of persistence, y'all. Yeah, and I, I think it's the same not just for undrafted free agents, but for for anybody that's that's cut, you know, or doesn't get that first opportunity to stick with it. So, uh, you know, I, I've said it all along that it's cool to see guys get an opportunity, and whether this is it, I mean, you're going to be able to tell everybody that you you tried out and worked out with an NFL team at the very least, and who knows, it might turn into something that's pretty incredible, um, and and now. Yeah, that's that, that's awesome. And and um, so what like one before we, we wrap this episode up, what one piece of advice would you give to um, not just an undrafted free agent, but any rookie that's going out there to a mini camp? Don't don't pigeonhole yourself. Get in the playbook and learn, learn it all. As in regards to your position, now don't 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 be an undrafted rookie receiver knowing what the O line do. That's <laughs> not that's not going to be uh, pertinent. But if coach tells you, "Hey man, you're an X," it it, it does not. 
take that much more brain power to understand the other two routes on the field. Right. Understand what the why is doing, even though it's generally a tight end. Understand what the other people are doing, because based on how your offense is, um, it could it could be something that is easy for you to. To learn as a whole, rather than saying, I only play this, if you only play one position, you're probably going to find yourself out of the league. You want to play as many things as possible and and be be available. Uh, So, number one, know what you're doing. Study that playbook and number two, be available. You gotta, you can't make the tub and can't make the club if you're in the tub. That's the saying. So stay healthy, take care of your body, and and pay attention to that playbook. Love it. That's a, and that's a guy who's done it before. So uh, take that advice, and it'll be it'll be fun to see which of these guys stand out, not just for the Commanders, but across the league, and really run with this opportunity and, and take hold of it and make something happen. So we'll definitely be breaking down rookie mini camps, any highlights from that, and then as the team ramps up and. OTAs and all that good stuff. Like we say, this 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 league never sleeps, and it's just ramping up now from the draft on. And it it, it won't be too long before we're talking about actual football games. It's right around the corner, uh, but exciting stuff for the rookies. Um, and we'll we'll be there every step of the way. So follow us at Believe Commanders on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. We're always posting different things there, and you can follow along and you can watch watch. We, you'll be able to watch us now on Believe TV. I think we'll, yes. we'll know when we're on and we'll let you guys know. But you can listen to us on TuneIn Radio, SiriusXM, Stadium, all of your favorite streaming platforms as well. And then if you if you want to bet on uh, a player or a team like the Commanders, you can head to Bet Online and, and put in our code BLEAV for a 50% welcome bonus. So check those guys out and go put some money down on, on a player or two or a game or two or even something uh, else you can check out there yes indeed you got all the options out there thanks to those folks over there at bet online thanks to brian it's been fun sir been yeah. been fun love working with you uh, on this and uh once again shout out to all those rookies out there shout out to all those um, undrafted players getting in there getting an opportunity hey you're not you're not too small for the moment baby you can step up you can make a play you can turn some heads this may be the opportunity that you need now you just got to make it Make a make a play and take advantage of it. You're so. inspiring me. I'm gonna get out of here and go run through a wall. Love it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> run through the wall. Yes, indeed, folks. Hey, we can go get this thing done. We're gonna reach the top. We always get better. Uh, you can definitely do that. But for Brian Murphy, I'm Anthony Armstrong. This is Believe in Commanders. We'll see you guys in the next one. Be good. <laughs>